Before we get started, what an achievement you have become. Thank you. What a gift you have become. Thank you. And you need to drink that every morning, and nobody can say it enough to you. Mm -hmm. Because I cannot imagine what, it, what you had to sacrifice to do and to become who and what you are. Right. So it, they ought to clap for you again. Thank you. So let, let's, let's get into your story, man, because you started innovating um, and creating when you were 13 years old. Am That's I right about that? That's correct. T talk to me about that, because when I was 13, I was not creating nothing. So I would say my passion for technology came when my father bought me a computer at the age of eight from mm -hmm. Goodwill. And I've, I've always had a love. From Goodwill. From Goodwill. We, we weren't fortunate to get a brand new Gateway or a brand new Dell. That's yeah. what I really wanted. Yeah. But, um, you know, my, my father was um, uh, going, retired and on mm. Social Security. And he took me to Goodwill. And he bought me a non-working computer for $20. Mm. And we took that computer home. And I took it apart. And I saw on the board that it had broken capacitors, and capacitors are yeah, because I don't know what that is. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's just chipsets on the on the board. Got it. Got and it. And playing with different radios throughout the house, I took some parts out of his older radio and put it in that computer. Played with it a couple of times, and I finally got that computer to working. Wow. You know, you know what's amazing about you. And, and what, I, what I'm loving about you already, and I just met you, is I fall in love real easy, <laughs> is, is that you, you just make it sound like, you know, I took apart the radio, and I put some... What, where does that come from? Well, again, it came from just a, a passion for figuring out things mm. and just playing with different items around the house that was electronic. My parents, if we go a little bit farther than that, mm. um, I, I'm not even supposed to be here today. Yeah, yeah, no, we're we gonna come to that. And we're gonna come to that. Yeah. And, and, and so hold, hold that yeah. part, hold that part. Because I wanna stay here for a while, and here's why I wanna stay here. Because I want people to understand that I'm talking to someone who has a $62 million company. Correct. Mm. Right? Woo! Yeah. Uh, yeah, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, 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 he, but, in, but here's, the, here's the genius of it, is that the capacity to build that kind of company right. came from a basic curiosity that all children have. What would happen if the children that are in our homes already, if that curiosity was nurtured and, and, and allowed to grow and flourish, who knows what companies are walking around our bedrooms? Right. I mean, it could be anything. I mean, just a simple idea and just turn that idea into a plan and execute it, and you could be whatever you want to be. I know that's right. I know that's right. So, so, so I'm gonna change gears for a second. Okay. Um, uh, talk to me about innovation, because you are, you are an innovator. Right. And by that, I, here's what I mean when I say innovator, right? I, I mean someone who creates products and services uh, either out of nothing or, or, or on the back of other things that have been created, but you improve what, what was already there. Right. <clears throat> Is that right? Correct. So majority of our, pro well, all of our products came about from different problems and trying to figure out a solution to those problems. Um, I go into deep meditation and I always assess the situation mm. and figure out, okay, this is the problem. So what solution can I build to fix this problem. So you meditate? Yes. Mm. I, I, I have never heard of a techie guy who meditates. Have to, I have to. To figure out different software solutions and, and different products to, to build, to create opportunities and to improve technology, I have, I have to meditate. So, so you mentioned the products. Yes. So, and you, you have some products here, right? Correct. These are some of your products. Now, we're going to get to this product in a second. Yes. So, so <laughs> hold, hold that one off. Tell me about, and these are literally products that you and your company have created. Right. And I own the patent store. And you own the patent store. Yes. Which is even better. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Um, I mean, j just for the sake of clarity, can you walk, walk me through some of the more interesting ones? Sure. That so, you want to give me? 
<laughs> so this is our Figures F3 cell phone. Okay. This cell phone right here has 5G capabilities. Hold it up. Multi-user profile and dual SIM capabilities. So if I asked you, can I borrow your phone, what would you tell me? No. Why is that? Because <laughs> I don't want you to know what's in it. Right. So with the Figures phone, as soon as you, it's, it has multi-user profile. So I can hand you my phone, sign out, sign into a guest profile, and it, you won't have to worry about any of my personal content. Are you serious? Correct. So Are you keep, serious? It keeps everything private. I love Freddie so much. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, just, and just not only that, it has dual SIM capabilities as well. So when you sign out of your profile, all of your phone calls will still be in the main line. Really? So you, hand, you may have a child or something, and you want to hand them your phone. You don't want to hand them your iPhone. Yeah, so yeah. So they go through your photos, yeah. text messages, everything. So with a figure's phone, when you sign out, hand them a pro. My son was in town. The other week, and he was like, Pumps, let me use your phone. Mm -hmm. I was like, the devil no, is a lie. Yeah, you don't want to You don't want to get my that. phone. Right. But if I had your phone, I could have, I could have. Right. Now, his, if you say you're working on this, I will leap over this stage. Where is the battery that I don't have to plug into? Hopefully, by June, we will have that on the market. Shut up. Yes. So I built a wireless inductive charger. So as soon as you get five meters within range, your phone automatically starts charging. There's no cords, no cable, no anything. Leave your phone in your pockets, your purse, take a nap, wake up, your phone's fully charged. Let the church say amen. <laughs> Are you serious? <sighs> the joy that floods my soul. I, I, I have been telling people, whoever builds the first wireless charger is going to make a billion dollars. Yes. <laughs> but it's like facts. <laughs> yes. That's correct. That's amazing, man. Thank you. Uh, one more. Show me one more. So, yeah. So, we got the figures of F-Buds there. Those are our... These? Yes, sir. Those okay. are our wireless earbuds. Now, here's a unique feature about them. These are hot. When they are paired with the Figures F3, they have auto translation. So I have 96 languages that automatically translate. So if someone calls you speaking French or Spanish, when paired with the Figures F3, it automatically translates that into English. Freddie, who the hell are you? <laughs> Just an average where, joke. Where do you come from? Are you serious? Yes, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is black excellence. Yes. That's what it is. I mean, that's what it is. That's what it is. I, I, I am, I, God, that excites me. Yes. Um, and, and, and I'm not, I mean, the products are obviously exciting, right. especially the charger. Especially yes. the charger. That charger is. Come yes. June, call me. Yes, sir, I got you. But, but what excites me is, as you talk about it, I, my, I'm, I'm real good with people. Yes. That, that's one of my gifts. I'm, I, I can pick up on somebody from across the room. And when I talk to you, I don't get to say I'm talking to some arrogant, pompous. No. I mean, let me tell you how arrogant I would be <laughs> if I had created that phone. Yes. My head would not be able to fit into this room. Wow. <laughs> but, but what I honor about you is that there's this basic humility and this basic accessibility to your presentation of yourself that just makes me so proud. Right. That you're black. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! So, 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 how do you stay grounded? Let me ask you that. It's very simple. I just remember where I come from. Mm. Mm. Which I mean, we'll get to in a second. Yeah. Don't spill the beans yet. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so let me ask you a second question. How do you stay hungry? Wanting to change the world for the better and figuring mm. out a solution to every problem that I come into. Mm. You know, you, know, you know what's amazing about that is that um, you being so young, uh, Dr. King, uh, my mentor, was also a mentor for Dr. King. His name is Gardner Taylor. Mm -hmm. He was also Dr. King's mentor. And he tells me that Dr., one of the things Dr. King worried about was that he had had so much success when he was young. He wasn't quite sure when he got into his 40s, 50s, 60s, what he was going to do with his life because he right. won a Nobel Prize by the time he was 26. Right. You being this successful and this young, do you ever worry about, you know, how you're going to, you know, manifest and, and top your accomplishments later on? No, because I have so many concepts and different innovations that I'm having that's come down the pipeline. So I'm pretty excited about the future. <laughs> Look, he said, no. 
<laughs> I don't have that problem. You know, it's interesting about that because I, I, I you, there are so many people tonight who are watching you and us, uh, who are judging their lives against your early success. There you go. They're in their 40s, their 50s, their 60s, and, and they're not even close to having $62 million. Mm -hmm. What would you say to people who are making a false comparison right now? I would say don't let your circumstances define who you are mm -hmm. and don't let anyone tell you that your idea is stupid and your idea will never make it. Mm -hmm. Believe in yourself and keep going. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you know what, can I add to that? Yes, sir. I would tell them that you don't get to skip stages. You don't. Mm -hmm. I would tell them that it's not your destiny to do it at 30. It's your destiny to teach the world that you can be great at 50. Right. And, and life, it, life needs people who, make, who, who, who get there at different moments and times so that the rest of us understand that opportunity, it never gets old. No, it doesn't. It never gets old. It doesn't. So, you know, what's interesting, what's interesting about you, it, because, because I sense your mind and how your mind works. And, and if you can create all this with phones <laughs> that are speaking French and earphones <laughs> that are, you know what I'm saying? I wonder, how, how hard is it for you to connect to people? Hmm. You know, it's, it's been tough. Mm. Um, again, from my upbringing, and, you know, that what made it, that's what made it a challenge when I was a kid. So let, let, let's go there now. Okay. Let's go there now, because there's a story um, that, that defines a lot of your, yes. I would say, your life. Right. Um, I talked to Tommy Davidson last night, yes. <clears throat> and he has a similar story. Yes. And, and after you tell your story, I'm going to tell you a story. Okay. Go. So, my biological mother, when, well, when I was born, my biological mother threw me out like day-to-day -day trash mm. and abandoned me at a dumpster. Mm. I never, to this day, never met my biological family, mm. don't know who they are, where they are. And I was adopted by two elderly people mm. that took me in and loved me as theirs. And when I say elderly, they were going into their 70s. Mm. So when you think about someone in their 70s. With a baby. Well, they're, they're not even thinking about, they're thinking about grandkids and great grandkids, yeah. not adopting a newborn yeah. that was a sick baby and raising him as their own. And gr growing up, it, it was tough because I was bullied a lot mm. by kids because I come from a very small, small town. Mm. And, you know, kids who say, dumpster baby, you know, just, just criticize mm. me. And my parents, again, they were in advanced aging, so they couldn't take me to the park to play football or catch. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when my dad really got me that computer. And honestly, when you say, interacting with people, that computer became my best friend. Mm. And mm. that's what drove my passion mm. for technology and just wanted to be different. Yeah. I love him so much. <laughs> I can hug you right now. Oh. I mean, because, because it, it's, it's, such a, it's such a, first of all, if, if, if your biological parents had known what they were throwing in the garbage. Mm. They'd have ran back out there and grabbed you. Do you understand that? Yes. It, it's amazing because how people with no vision and no forethought right. can give up on something too soon. Right. Nobody knew they were throwing $62 million in the garbage can. I'm about to throw my shoe. Right. I'm telling you, man. It, it's more amazing. Time. Now, 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 you know, Tommy Davidson has a very similar story. Okay because he was left um, in a garbage can. Wow. And his biological, his adopted mom saw his foot sticking out from under a tire. Yeah. Uh, it makes me want to ask you this. Um, how did it bless you? It blessed me by knowing that there are good people out there. Mm. And uh, again, for my, my, my father's everything that I had. They, my parents didn't have much. My mother was a sharecropper and my daddy was a maintenance man. Mm. And they didn't have an, an education. My, my mother stopped school in the third grade to support her family. 
Mm. And they gave me everything they had just just for me to get an, a, a, just a simple education. Mm. Wow.